Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we are going to talk about one very important question which is how do you go about building your calculation speed. And this is one question that I get a lot from students whether it is NMAT, SNAP, CET, CMAT, all sorts of competitive exam aspirants that how do I build my speed. And generally when that question is asked it deals with only one part of speed which is computation. So everybody says how should I build my calculation speed. But actually there are different levels of speed when you take any exam and that is something that you need to focus on in addition to the calculation speed. So we'll understand those levels first and then I'll give you some strategies that you can use to actually build your speed. Okay, so let's get started. Now the first thing or rather first level is reading speed. So when you read any question, whether it is a quant question, logical reasoning puzzle or a DI set or an RC for that matter, you have reading speed which is your current reading speed and if it is at a slightly higher rate compared to others you will be able to read the same question in lesser time which will buy you some more time that you can actually use to solve those questions. We'll understand how to build that but before we get there let's look at the second level of speed which is your decision speed that you have looked at a question and you have to make a quick decision whether I should solve it or I should leave it. And that decision will also create an impact on the total number of questions that you are able to solve. And then comes the next level which is the actual calculation or computation of that particular problem. So if it is a quant problem it could be forming the equations and then taking the next set of steps. If it is logical puzzle then making the initial arrangement or framework in which you are going to approach it and so on and so forth. So how do I go about improving myself in each of these areas. So let's start with reading speed. Now there are two strategies broadly that you can use to increase your reading speed. The one is basically skimming and the second is looking for keywords. So when you are skimming you are basically skipping some part of the question and when you are looking for keywords you are basically looking at things that stand out. It could be numbers in the question, it could be some text in the question which gives you some idea as to what the question is all about. For example if I show you a question like this right. Now, if I'm reading this question for the first time, I don't have to read the entire question to figure out that it is from ratios because as I start reading the question, as I just glance through it, the question itself will tell you that it is ratio based because the second statement is the ratio of the number of boys and girls. So you know okay, that this is from ratio proportion and I have to do some sort of calculations to solve this. And what am I supposed to solve? So that will come towards the end of the question. So the question says who do not pass to the number of boys who do not pass the exam. So I have to find a ratio. Given a ratio, I have to do some calculations and find another ratio. To arrive at this part, which is the essence of the question, I don't have to read the entire question. So what I've done is I have just looked at some of the keywords that appeared in this particular question. And because of which I've been able to figure out what is the area from which the question has been asked and what specific part of that particular topic is the question dealing with. Okay, so this is a straightforward question on ratios. Now, if you practice this technique, which is skimming, looking at the keywords and just identifying the important things from that particular question, you will be able to save some bit of time that you can use for actual calculations. Now, having looked at the question, having done this kind of skimming, the next question that comes is how do you make that decision? So that is why there are some techniques that you can use to again get better at decision making. Now the number one thing is the length of the question. So that will generally be a clue in terms of how much effort will be required on that particular question. However, it is not something which is written in stone. So I cannot say that just because a question is lengthy, it's a difficult question. And that is why you also need to look at things such as the nature of the sub questions, especially if it is a logical reasoning puzzle or a DI set. What kind of sub questions are asked based on it? Are they all questions that are uh, that have direct answer or are they case based questions and if they are starting with the word if it's a sure shot indicator that there the information in the set is not complete and you might have to do extra case writing to arrive at the answer. So what kind of questions are asked and then familiarity and comfort have I seen something like this earlier am I generally comfortable solving this particular question type. So those are the questions that you should be asking yourself. And a lot of times with practice this becomes a part of your muscle memory. So you are able to look at a question and make very quick decisions whether you should attempt it right now or should you skip it. And if you get better at decision making again you will be able to save some time which you can use for calculations. So let me illustrate this with an example. 
So I've given you two quant questions, right? Now you may or may not read the entire questions, but what you need to figure out is, let's say you start reading this. If a positive number is divided by eight, I don't have to read the rest of the question to figure out that the area is numbers. Let me go to second question. A man invested P rupees in scheme A, which gives SI. I just need to stop here. I can figure out that it is a question on simple interest, compound interest. Now, which of these questions will you do? That will vary from person to person. Somebody who has practiced arithmetic a lot will say that the SICI question is more doable. Whereas somebody who has practiced a lot of numbers would say that the first question is easier. So you have to figure out that which of these questions you want to do based on your own comfort level. Personally, for example, in this case, I would have gone with the first question because it's a very simple question which has a negative remainder concept. And you, if you read through the question carefully, uh, even while reading, you should be able to figure out what the approach is. And the answer actually comes to be 70 because it has a minus 7 as a remainder. Whereas the second question will need some bit of computation. So if I had to take a call between these two, I would have gone with the first question and cracked it then and there itself. Is the second question difficult? No. The second is still a moderate question. It's between easy to moderate. Somebody will classify it as easy. Somebody will say it's moderate. But it requires some bit of writing compared to the first one. And that is why if you had to make a choice, ideally go with the first one rather than going with the second one. Okay. So this will come with practice. The more questions you solve, the better decisions you start making in the actual test. So even in your mock test, right? Whenever you are taking mock test, try to practice this thing, look at question and rather than reading the entire thing. So even when I illustrated this uh, particular trick to you, we didn't read the entire question. We just saw the main part of it and made a decision that which one is supposed to be done and practice this. I'm sure you are going to get better at it. And then that brings us to the last part, which is the actual calculation or computation. So what is the strategy for this? So the most important strategy is framing the initial equation while you are reading the question. Now it might not happen in every single case. For example, if you are uh, reading, let's say some sort of a logic puzzle, while you are solving, while you are reading it, you might not be able to frame the entire thing unless you have maybe read the entire puzzle that is there. But in a lot of quant questions, the first initial equation you should be able to frame in your head. In addition to this, there are three very important things or uh, maybe you can even add two more to that. But the most important ones would be percentages, reciprocals and tables. And the two additional ones would be squares and cubes. But percentage, reciprocals and tables will help you calculate things much faster. So the moment you see, for example, something like, let's say, 37.5%. Uh, Immediately it should strike you that I have to use 3 upon 8 or if I give you say 4 upon 9 and I ask you to convert it to percentage, you should be very comfortable in doing that. At the same time, multiplications is very important and that will come with tables. So if you are very good with tables, your multiplications will become faster. For example, if I ask you what is 19 into 21, a lot of people might start actually writing it and then calculating. But somebody will think about the question and say, Okay, I can do a 20 minus 1 into 20 plus 1, which is a very good strategy. Or somebody can even orally say that since it is 19 into 21, I can do a 19 into 20 plus 19 because ultimately that is what you are doing. So there are various ways in which you can improve your calculation speed. But that's not going to happen unless you work on your percentages, reciprocals and tables. What I mean by reciprocals and percentages, the equivalence between the two. So how do I go from a reciprocal or a fraction? to let's say its equivalent percentage. So let me illustrate what is the initial equation framing part that I spoke about. So let's say we have this question. Now the question says a water tank can be filled by pipes ABC, 120, 60, 90 minutes respectively working alone. It's a pretty standard time and work question that you might have seen. On Monday morning, the three pipes were opened simultaneously and so on when the tank was empty. After 15 minutes, pipe B was closed. After 15 minutes, pipe A was closed. How many more minutes are required to fill the entire tank? Now, generally what happens is the moment uh, students see a question, they start solving it. They start writing down things uh, that might not be required. I need to think about the question before I start doing it. So while I'm reading it, I have given it a thought and I have figured out that I'm going to use the units method to solve this question. Now, what is units method? You, I'm sure a lot of you might be already familiar, but you basically assume some units of work. So in this case, it will be LCM of 120, 60 and 90, right? So you should know how to calculate LCM faster. 
uh, so you can look at the higher number which is 120 and think of it stable and that takes you to 360 so the lcm comes out to be 360 so let me take 360 units as the work so far i have not done any writing okay so i've just given it a thought that i should take 360 units of work to solve this so that in this case will be capacity of the tank so if the capacity is 360 liters a b and c will be respectively doing 3 liter per minute uh, then 6 liter per minute and then 4 liter per minute so I've got the individual efficiencies, 3, 6 and 4. I have to retain this in my head. Then I go to the actual question. Now what they're saying is, having read through the question, we know that uh, the pipe B was running only for 15 minutes. Whereas pipe A was running for 15 more minutes, which is essentially 30 minutes. So to figure out how much more time will be required, I have to figure out what was the work done in the first 30 minutes. So see, we have not done any writing so far. We're just trying to solve it only. Now just think about it. If pipe A was open for 30 minutes and we have found the efficiency as 3 liter per minute, how much work will it do? It will do 30 into 3 which is 90. Now keep that with you. Let's think of the next pipe which is B which was open for 15 minutes. What was the efficiency? 6 liters per minute. So 6 into 15, how much work will it do? It will do 90. So pipe A has done 90, pipe B has also done 90 liters. Let's think of pipe C whose efficiency is 4 liter per minute. So if it is open for the first 30, it will do 30 into 4, which is 120. So we have done 90, 90, 120, 180 plus 120, we have done 300. So 300 is the work done and 60 is remaining, right? And who is going to do it? Pipe C is going to do it with an efficiency of 4 liter per minute. So 60 upon 4, it will require 15 minutes to do it. Now what I have demonstrated is something that you can do with practice. But even if you are not able to do the entire part of it orally, right? at least the initial formation, which is this, that 30A plus 15B plus 30C is work done at the end of first 30 minutes. If you are able to form even this first equation in your head, you will save a lot of writing time. Okay, So that is something that you need to focus on whenever you are practicing. Try to, once you are done with the question, try to see whether is there any faster way to do it or just revise all those steps in your head. So to summarize, there are some overall strategies that I would like to share. Number one is the offline practice. So this tricks and whatever things that we have discussed, you can't do it if you directly go for the exam. You will have to do them offline, which means whenever you are taking, whenever you are taking practice test or let's say section test or whenever you are just solving question without any time limit, please try to do this. Look at the question, try to read it quickly, try to see if you can form the initial equation in your head and whatever calculations as much as possible try to do them orally so then only you'll be able to actually implement it in an actual test the second thing is analyzing your rough sheets so that is a very important thing so whenever you are done with the mock look at the rough sheets because it will tell you how much rough work you are doing while solving questions and you will be able to figure out if there's anything that you are doing without any strong reason so you should ask yourself if you look at your rough work is this thing really necessary I have written maybe let's say things something like uh, let the total work be 360 units. Is it really required to write it down or I can just maybe write 360 and still work fine with that. So you will have to think of ways of reducing the entire time that you are spending on the paper. Then the mental revision of steps. As I said, try to recite those steps in your head. The way we went through that entire time and work question. You can do this for a lot of questions that you are solving at home to see what are the steps because the moment you recite those things again and again they will become part of your the methodology that you generally follow to solve questions right and then lastly believing that you can do it a lot of students uh, and i've uh, seen this a lot happening to students who come from non-math background they generally have a phobia of math and they always come with this thing that i'm not good at math but the essence is, if you look at any competitive exam, math is just one of the things which is going to take you to the end outcome that is there. So look at it positively rather than thinking continuously about it that I'm not good at this, I would not be able to get better at it. Flip it. Think in a very different way and have that growth mindset. So there are two kinds of mindset, growth mindset and fixed mindset. People with growth mindset will say that, okay, I can get better at this. Whereas people with fixed mindset will say that I can't get better at this. So you decide what kind of person you want to be and I hope you become the person with the growth mindset. So that's it for this particular video. I hope you have found this discussion useful. If you have any observations, any comments, uh, 
please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I will try and get back at the earliest. I hope the video has helped you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care and keep studying.